Where on earth do you find a land resplendent with myriad cultures, myriad thoughts and expressions, all harnessed towards the pursuit of excellence? Honors and awards won by Indians have recognized their contribution to a wide range of fields, covering literary and artistic creativity, the sciences, welfare economics, and charity, manifestations of the spirit of India. Dear Sir Rabindranath, I have been trying to find courage to write to you ever since you were in London. This letter may never reach you, for I do not know how to address it. It is nearly two years ago that my eldest son went to war for the last time, where he bade goodbye to me with breaking heart. And when his pocketbook came back to me, I found those wonderful words of yours written in his dear writing with your name on it. Lines from a letter written to Tagore by the mother of Wilfred Owen, the young British poet killed in World War I. Rabindranath Tagore enriched every field of human thought and action. He found in nature a richness that sustained his creativity. I am by nature a poet. Ever since my childhood days, my only vocation was to express my ideas in verses, give shape to my dreams in my poems. I had a natural love for life, for nature. As I grew up, my deepest love for literature and music increased my interest in writing novels and short stories, put music to my poems. Born in 1861 in Calcutta, Tagore's creative soul was not content with producing literature. He sought means to carry his joy in nature to the life of his people, to mold a whole new generation with a special feeling for nature. In Shanti Niketan, he set up a school in the lap of nature and turned into a teacher teaching through songs and dances, games and rituals, and through poetry. His life with nature and the growing children, the seamless continuity of the life process that he discovered, went into the making of Gitanjali. A whole series of new poems, a selection of which appeared in an English translation in November 1912 as Gitanjali, an offering of songs. In 1913, wrote W.B. Eats to Tagore. These lyrics, full of untranslatable delicacies of color, of material invention, display in their thought a world I have dreamt of all my life long. In the years that followed, Rabindranath traveled extensively meeting and exchanging notes with the greatest minds of his time. With the positions he took on various issues of national and international concern and his commanding presence with his sharp features, intense eyes, clear voice and in his dark flowing robes, he fast grew into an icon that people adored and looked up to. In 1930, in a historic dialogue, Tagore told Albert Einstein, this world is a human world. The scientific view of it is also that of a scientific man. The eternal, we know it as truth. We feel it as beauty. Around the same time, on a visit to Russia, he seemed to have discovered a model for a society concerned with the needs of the people and seeking progress through the dissemination of education. 
But as the war clouds gathered and the freedom struggle in India entered a critical phase, Tagore sought to look beyond the darkness to the birth of a new universal man. He tried to articulate his concerns and his vision in a desperate spurt of creativity, bursting forth in a flood of paintings, daringly unshackled verse. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments of narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth.
After having succeeded in so many ways in nucleic acid chemistry and nucleic acid molecular biology, including the synthesis of the first biologically active gene, tyrosine transfer RNA, Corona decided to switch and to work in the field of membranes. And he worked uh, then on bacteria rhodopsin and opsin, the molecules that are so important for vision. In a few years ago, I was chairman of a session at a meeting in, in Hokkaido that honored Corana. And um, Corana gave uh, the last lecture and the keynote lecture of the meeting. And I have never seen anyone so enthusiastic and so young talking about his research and about the fact that he's now ready to switch another time to a different area of research. And he, in the meantime, has done this and continued and <clears throat> to work on the physiology and no longer strict biochemistry of vision. And it's simply amazing to see that <clears throat> someone was educated under a tree in Punjab, rose to be such a scientist who can switch fields so many times and make an absolutely indelible contribution to each field.
fundamental motivation in the pursuit of science has to be aesthetic and the innate beauty in science. And he was motivated by Francis Bacon who said, there is no beauty which has no strangeness in proportion. So he was extremely sensitive to uh, aesthetic beauty in science. He was a very mathematically oriented scientist, not an intuitive scientist. But to him, mathematics was not just a set of equations. He would compare a formula of Ramanujan with a bust of a sculpture of Michelangelo or a, a string quartet of Beethoven. So you have to have listened to him expound on these things to, to, to really appreciate how complete a man was.
the Lord to serve our fellow men throughout the world who live and die in poverty and hunger. Give them to our hands this day their daily bread, and by our understanding love, give peace and joy. important factor that uh, explains the differences in, in, uh, um, in, the, in the gender differential in mortality uh, among, uh, among children are uh, one, um, female education and literacy, and two, female employment opportunity, gainful employment for wages. Now both of these, as you can see, increases the bargaining power of women within the family as it raises the status of women, women become earners when they have the job outside rather than being dependent, quote unquote, in the peculiar sense in which the term is used. And similarly, uh, literacy and education uh, gives, you, gives women a voice, a uh, more articulate voice, uh, more respected because of the education they acquire. And also, schooling also serves as exposure to the rest of the world. It's remarkable that not only gender bias in mortality, but in fact, overall, infant uh, and child mortality is also most affected by female literacy. That is the most important influence on it. 